Hey guys, it's MJ. I'm back. Um, that dog stopped barking. I literally cannot deal with external noises. Um, that's why I was a night nurse for so many years. Um, yeah, so I debated whether to share this, but the Lord has put it on my heart to share it. Um, so for the last two days when I was in prayer, I saw the Lord holding in his hand a golden nugget. Okay, and I didn't see his face. I just saw a robe, his robe, and he was holding in his hand a golden nugget. So um, I asked him for the interpretation, like, what, what do you mean by, um, why do you show me these things? Sometimes he'll show me, you know, a little bit later. Well, today, when I got home from physical therapy, which was brutal by the way, and thank you so much guys for your prayers um, for the recovery of this rotator cuff um, surgery. <laughs> yeah, my physical therapist is pretty brutal with, you know, pulling and stretching it and everything, and which is necessary, you know. We have to persevere and you know, all that good stuff. But anyway, when I got home, I opened up my Bible literally to 1 Peter 1, 6. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice. Inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And it goes on to say in 1 Peter, know that we were not redeemed by corruptible things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without, he indeed was preordained, foreordained before the foundations of this world. And Peter, First Peter, as you know, he goes on to say, abstain from fleshly lust that war against our soul. So guys, what I think the Lord was saying is that we are so very close. Um, First Peter 4, 8, and above all things, above all things, have fervent love for one another for love covers a multitude of sin god gives grace god resists the proud but gives grace to the humble okay so I just believe he was saying we are so very close. And the testing of our faith, guys, each of us are going through different circumstances. Each of us are going through something so spiritually tough. I mean, beyond anything we've ever gone through. I mean, I know for me, it's, it's up there. It's up there in the top five. Yeah. And I have to keep pressing in and pressing on and believing and walking by faith. Because faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen, not yet seen, but believing. What are we believing for? We're believing for our blessed hope. Jesus is about to, that trumpet is about to sound, guys. And what I believe Jesus is, was telling me is to tell you guys 
and to encourage, the Bible says, to encourage one another as we see the day approaching. What day? The rapture. For that trumpet will sound, the dead in Christ will rise first, and we who are alive and remain, this final generation, the fig tree generation, will be caught up with them and ever so be with our Lord. And the Bible tells us to comfort one another with these words, encourage one another with these words. And the Lord wants us to know that we are so close. Don't be discouraged. I see a lot of comments where people are just holding on. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We have to consciously make a conscious act of doing that. That's not going to come natural in the flesh. Okay, but him holding that gold in his hand and me seeing that gold, it's like, what is that word? What are you showing that to me for? Because the trial of our faith is more precious to God than gold. Okay, so whatever we're going through, how are you going through it? Go through it with faith, trusting in God's ability to see you through it. God's ability to, no matter what happens, it's going to come out the way that he planned it to come out. I know there's a lot going on, guys. I know. And I know that when I read the comments, and I am so sorry, my heart breaks for a lot of you. And I don't share a lot that's going on in my own personal life for a, for a good reason. I just don't. I don't want, you know, people to get angry at me and my own family. And um, just because details don't need to be shared. But, you know, it's heartbreaking. There are things that are just heartbreaking and that also break the heart of God. You know, but Jesus is with us. The Holy Spirit is comfort. He's our comfort. He's our guide. He's our encouragement. And he wants us to walk through this, whatever we're walking through, in victory. Okay? I mean, everything is not going to be a party, you know, but the joy of the Lord is our strength. We need to walk through these final moments. We need to run this race in these final, this is the final lap, however long it is. We need to run the race, as Paul said. And, it, and I believe the Lord was looking at that gold and just saying how precious and costly that is to him. We are his pearl of great price. And what he gave for us. There's no comparison. He gave it all. He gave it all. So just take that and understand that. The Holy Spirit is always present always petitioning in prayer for us okay so and and the bible says be still and know that i am god so that's an action on our part we need to I, with all of this chaos that's going on insanity that's going on around us it's spiritual warfare principalities and powers in high places wicked rulers in high places and when things come against us and we think things when we think thoughts not every thought that we think is our own you need to remember that we need to bring every thought captive to the obedience of christ jesus you know we need to catch that thought in in action you know that's a process because we have ha habit patterns of thinking, you know, and then defeated habit patterns, internal dialogues that are just so self-defeating. Okay. We're new creations in Christ. Okay. We need to remember that in this flesh. 
it will always try to put us under. Always. The Bible says in Galatians and also in Romans chapter 7 and I believe chapter 8, Romans 7, 8, um, that the flesh and the spirit will always fight against each other, always be in opposition against each other. So know that going forward. Know that it will be a, a fight to sit down and read the word of God. As sad as that is, it will be a fight to sit down and open the word of God because your flesh will always come up with, oh, I have to do this. I have to clean the garage. I have to do the toilets. You know, I have to clean the car, whatever. Irrelevant stuff. Totally irrelevant. And the flesh and the spirit will always oppose one another. So you have to parent your own flesh. It's a daily process of crucifying this flesh. But Jesus crucified it on the cross. Okay. So I'm going to leave you guys with, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And Jesus gave this to me when I was struggling, I don't know, 30 years ago with smoking. Okay. And he wanted me to know that don't allow your sin to separate you from him. Don't allow whatever sin you're struggling with to separate you from the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. He wants to fellowship with you and show you why you do what you do. But when we internalize shame and blame and all this other game the enemy tries to play with our head um, because of our sin, which Jesus already overcame, by the way, which he already gave us the victory, by the way. So I'm going to say I'm waiting for my deliverance. Well, you'll be waiting until you, the rapture comes or till we pass, whichever one comes first, uh, because the victory was already won. But the enemy will play with our head. And um, well, Jesus gave this to me when I was struggling with cigarettes. And he was sad. The heart of God was sad because I was not allowing him into my struggle with that smoking, with the addiction. And I mean, gosh, he had just delivered me from a $1,000 a day cocaine addiction and opiate addiction and everything else, you know, and yet I was still struggling with this smoking and, and I didn't even know it was affecting my fellowship with him. See, but he wanted to show this to me. So... This is called, Behold, I Stand at the Door and Knock. I heard a faint knocking tonight at my heart's door, and I was ashamed to answer it, for I knew it was the Lord. There he stood, looking humble and sad, his eyes full of compassion, like a concerned, thoughtful dad. Don't you know, he said, I know everything. There's nothing hidden, child, that I haven't seen. I've watched you destroying yourself, and my spirit has grieved. And my intention in visiting tonight is to set your soul free. Behold, my child, I stand at the door and knock. And only from your side can that door be unlocked. I have many treasures awaiting you. But remember, my path is narrow and my followers few. I won't force the issue and I'll never intrude. I respect your will and I wouldn't dare be rude. And there's one more thing before I go. You must believe that I love you so. That alone will be sufficient to meet all of your needs. But the requirement is that you truly believe. My love and truth will set your soul free, even when your will doesn't want to agree. Reach out and touch me. Call on my name. If you're a true believer, you'll know that's why I came. I came to set the captives free, and beloved, your, this is your name written down in front of me. Our names, the moment we come to Christ and believe that Jesus is Lord, that God raised him from the dead, uh, that he, we're forgiven for our sins. If you don't know, uh, our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The moment we repent, which is metanoia, to simply turn away from our sin, uh, 
change our mind, not turn away from the sin is a condition. Okay. We can't turn away. We can't stop sinning. Okay. We can't, a lot of people say, oh, you, you stop sinning the moment you come to Christ. No, you change your mind and God will change your heart because you can't stop sinning. The Holy Spirit is the one that puts an end to that. Okay. And it's a, it's a gradual process. People who say they immediately stop sinning, well, and they never sinned again, that's a lie. That, that is a lie. Okay, every day, the thoughts we have come into our mind. We have sins of omission, sins of commission. Okay, uh, we struggle daily. And we go from, God brings us from victory to victory, beloved. Okay, so metanoia seems, repent means metanoia, simply means to change your mind about what you're doing, and God will change your heart. The heart is wicked above all things. Who can know it but God? Only God knows your heart. So let him in.